This is a new synthesizer that I have created. It's a four voice polyphonic synthesizer. Uh, it's built on the TNT 3.2 and TNT audio board, and it uses the TNT audio library. So, getting into it, we have um, some different sections. We have the oscillator, LFO, the filter, and envelope section and these touch inputs here for the notes. So here's the first oscillator. Just turning the volume up there. And then we have these switches for the oscillators. The top is square, bottom is a reverse sawtooth. Second oscillator is the same. And the third oscillator has a triangle on the bottom and a square on the top. So you get some variation there with the third one. 
So we we'll go ahead and bring in the second one and the first one. Just get them all together there. So all four voices. And then there's also a noise. Just white noise. And then we have this detune knob. You can detune it pretty subtly. Or you can crank it all the way up. You can get some chords. And that will tune the second oscillator up and the third oscillator down. The first oscillator stays and does not get detuned. We got our envelope section here. <laughs> These are just attack decay. The first two are for the amplitude, the second two are for the filter. So if we bring up the attack and decay, Do the same for the filter. Bring these back down. Then we got our LFOs up here. The first one is dedicated to pitch. And then the first knob is the frequency. And the second knob is the amount. You can hear that detune happening. It's a sine wave on that one. And then our second two here are dedicated to the filter. You can hear the reverse sawtooth. But you can also switch the LFO waveform to a sine. sign affecting the filter. Then you have our filter down here, and we have cutoff and resonance. It's just a low pass filter. Then we have our last knob here, which is just the octave control. As you can see, the LEDs are coming on, and those are displaying which voice is being used. Alright, so the last control is this endless encoder over here, which also has a push button. So, as multiple functions, you can press it down once, and this is for loading a patch. You can see the green LEDs indicate that you want to load, and then you just press 1 through 8, 
and you have that patch loaded. So I have eight, eight patches or presets stored on this. And then to clear out the patch, you just hold down the encoder for two seconds and it'll go back to just reading where the knobs are. So yeah, if you load a patch, you actually have to move the knob to where the location the, the preset was stored in order to activate that knob. But so the second push button, uh, the LEDs will all go red, which indicates that you want to save a patch. And I can go ahead and hit one of these to store the patch, but I don't really want to do that. So we'll go on to the third page and you'll notice the blue LED there. And this is where you set your scale. So right now we're on A minor. We're going to switch to B minor. Go back to A minor here. And these are just all minor scales, except for the last one, which is chromatic, but you only get eight notes. So this last page is a sequencer. It's a 32-step sequencer, and as you move the encoder, you select which step you'd like to edit. And the top LEDs indicate what page you're on. So now we're on the last page, and now we're on the first page. So once you have a step selected, you can go ahead and enter notes. Select a new step, enter notes. And you can see that there is a note on those steps, LEDs green, and then you just hit the encoder button again, and it's playing the sequence back. If the sequence is playing, the encoder works as a tempo control. Turn that down here. And when you're in the sequence mode, the LFO will synchronize to the tempo you have set there. Go back to the sequence edit page, and the sequence will stop. As you are scrolling through, you can actually play the steps when you have them selected. So let's say we want to put some more steps on the second page. Just scroll on over to the second page and enter some more steps. And you can also change the octave as you're entering steps. I'm going to go ahead and play that. First page. Then we'll just roll over to the second page. So the sequence will be as long as you enter steps for. So if I were to enter notes on the third page, we would have a 24 step sequence. To clear out the sequence, you can just hold down the encoder, and that'll clear your patch and your sequence. So you're back to initialized state. So the sequencer also can have up to two notes per step. So you can just select your step and enter two notes. That the green LED will be a slightly off green for the polyphonic steps versus the monophonic steps.
So we can also control the synth with MIDI. And here I have it hooked up via USB to my iPad running Fugue Machine. So we'll go ahead and start the sequence here. So here we have it hooked up to Cubasis, just using the keyboard in Cubasis to control it. But I've also recorded some MIDI, and I've recorded some CC automation. So all the parameters on the synthesizer can be controlled via MIDI. And we have CC14 here, which correlates to the cutoff filter, and I've entered in some steps. So the MIDI CCs first go through all the knobs from left to right, top to bottom, and they start at 1, and then after that you can control the switches as well for the waveforms of the oscillators and the LFO. So yeah, that's about everything as far as features for these little guys. Uh, each one is unique as far as the wood used. Uh, they're all 100% handmade. Uh, Output-wise, we have a mono RCA and a stereo 8th inch headphone jack. Then we have the USB for power and MIDI transmission. So yeah, and being 100% homemade, they, these aren't all perfect. Um, there's a slight gap on this one there, but I think they look pretty good. They all sound the same. They all have the same software. That's about everything for this synth. Um, I've made four of them, and they're probably the only ones that I will ever make, unless, I don't know, if folks really, really want them, I might consider making more of them, but they do take quite a while to put together the woodwork, soldering all the components in there. They took quite a bit longer than I expected. I was hoping to have all of these done by December, but just could not find time to work on them. So yeah, I'm selling them for 300 which is obviously quite a bit if you compare it to something like the the Behringer D, which is an analog synth. So, you know, if you're in the market for something like that, I would definitely recommend that rather than this. But if you are interested, um, there'll be a link in this video to purchase them. Uh, like I said, there's only four of them, and I have basically no idea what if they will sell fast or not at all. But <clears throat> I did want to make something that is available for folks to, to play around with, so... So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy these videos. Um, if you do and you want to subscribe, go ahead. Uh, I have no guarantee of frequency of when I'm going to upload stuff. It's just kind of whenever I finish projects and want to share them with you guys. So 
I appreciate all the uh, the support, all the comments. Uh, I try to get to them as much as I can, but, you know, time. So, anywho, bye.